We have only a couple weeks left to go here in Season 4 of the A's franchise, and today we look to wrap things up and look ahead to Season 5. It's easily been our most successful year in the series, although it's not likely we're going to finish with a winning record. But the A's gave us the toughest starting point out of any of the 30 organizations in Major League Baseball. And four years in, I feel like this team is on the brink of getting back into that competitive conversation. Maybe not being a championship level team yet, but getting back to where you can start to talk about the playoffs as a realistic possibility. We had a really good first half of the season, but things have definitely tailed off here in the very end. And the second half has been really really rough. The offense just hasn't gotten going the way it did in the first half. We've had our longest losing streak of the season here in the second half, but today we put a bow on this season and talk about where we are moving forward. So I have gone through and I've adjusted the rotations and stuff just to give, you know, some innings to guys who need some innings and playing time elsewhere. But I wanted to basically start off this episode by kind of recapping where things are with uh, the minor league teams as they uh, start to see their seasons come to an end. Like double A is done here in the next three days. Triple A is a little over a week out. But why don't we start off at the double A level where we have actually three top 50 prospects right now. Now, as we've gone deeper into this series, I'm not really a huge fan of how they're, like, making the top 50. Like, we have prospects who are so far away that I don't think that uh, it's really necessary to call them the top prospects if they're still years and years away from playing. Like, Michael Wilson is one player here who's legitimately closer at 68 overall. But regardless, this is how they do it. And we have three players here in the top 50, all at double A. Edgar Gonzalez, and we also have Luis Crespo and Gregorio Uribe. Crespo, I was hoping would make it to triple A this season, but it really hasn't been the season that I was hoping for. He's still developed, and this is not some throwaway year, but I wanted to see him play a little bit better if he's going to be a top 50 prospect. Just the 242 average. He has very limited power right now, but he's a good contact hitter that reaches base and could be an option for us down the road in the infield. Now, year three gave us a draft that was not very popular because I wasn't really prepared to take players in the first round like I wanted to be, and I ended up taking two relievers with my first two picks. I did get good players. But Gregorio Uribe is a 50 or a 65 overall right now and probably gets the bump to AAA next season. Edgar Gonzalez, he is a 60. He's actually higher rated as a prospect, although I disagree with that because his pitching clutch is really low. And I think that's going to be an issue and it's going to impact the role I ultimately want to give him, like pitching clutch. So for pitchers... When you have runners in scoring position, your pitching clutch replaces your hit per nine. So if you have a low pitching clutch, that's not really a pitcher you want with runners on base. So right now, Edgar Gonzalez is not much of a high leverage pitcher, whereas I feel like Gregorio Uribe is. 52 is a good starting point here. It's going to get better than that. And I think that Gregorio Uribe could very well be our future closer. But as I've gone through the organization today, taking a look at some things, the bullpen's got a lot of intriguing players across the board. Antonio Santiago is a player here who's been closing, and with his low pitching clutch, I really shouldn't have had him in this role, but who's to say the guy with 40 saves and only 5 blown shouldn't be closing games? He's getting the job done. He's probably just a lot better than most AA players at 68 overall and deserves a call up. Santiago was actually drafted in the same draft that gave us Edgar Gonzalez and Gregorio Uribe. So while it wasn't popular at the time, that draft could be a big part of our bullpen going forward. Double A also has Julian Rodriguez, who I would think is one of our most valuable prospects and I think deserves to be in the top 50 in the major leagues. We saw last episode he got the bump up to A potential, which was awesome. 
but he's got to work on his power, got to work on his defense. What I love, though, is him getting better with his power against lefties, like plus seven. I'm never counting on that. I'm hoping for plus three or four and anything more is kind of a bonus. Also at double A, you have one of our best pitching prospects and Elliot Hughes, who was taken back in the first year. He was competitive balance pick A, so I guess that makes him a first rounder. And Elliot Hughes is up to a 65 overall. And while he's still probably a couple years away, I like where he is. So we're going to do a lot of simulating today and get to the end of the double A campaign. We also have the final home games being played here at the Oakland Coliseum. We are going to retire it here after season four. I've been working on a new stadium, really excited about it. It will debut next year. We're actually going to call up Antonio Santiago to AAA so he can continue to play considering the double A season's done. And now AAA only has a few games left, but they may have some postseason action. But down there, I think you have a lot of guys who legitimately can help us out next season. So I know we're in a weird spot where it feels like, you know, the team is getting better. We are close to competing, but we're also still like developing a lot of these players. And it's going to come down to, do I want to go after veterans or do I want to call up some of these players? Because we have Henry Vasquez, who didn't have like the best season this year after looking really good last season. But I do think that he could come up and contribute. You got Cam Cope, who has only pitched 20 innings up here. I think he spent a lot of the year at double A, but... He was the second player we drafted in the entire series. So at 75 overall, what are we waiting for? Like he's going to probably be at camp next year and have a chance to make the team. Alfonso Montez is a 73 overall. We took him back in the second round of year two at 73 overall. He's close given he's 19 years old, probably still develop him a little bit. And there's only so many guys we can actually call up. Then in the bullpen, a lot of guys here. Ricky Griggs, 69 overall. Pretty close. You got George Williams, who was an all-star this year. 73 overall. He could be called up. You also have Antonio Santiago, who's not far out. Just moved him up here. And then Kendrick Haynes. He's been the closer this season, but it's been an up and down year for him. 37 saves, 9 blown saves. Had some uh, cold streak issues and ultimately is a 0.6 war player. But given his ratings and everything, like we're not far off from possibly seeing him. Then for position players, of course we have Miguel Cabrera, whose durability is the main thing holding him back right now. We're going to focus on trying to get coaches to help with durability and defense this year because a lot of our coaches' contracts are going to be ending after this season we'll go through that in a moment but Cabrera I think is arguably the best prospect in the entire organization now well obviously we took uh Yusniel Cruz and there is Julian Rodriguez that probably rank a little bit higher than Cabrera but uh he is one of our best we got Ivan Melendez who is 26 years old I am training his power to see if he can become a a bench power bat for us at the big league level and I think that he's pretty close to being a contributor there. There are a couple things, though, I'm looking at adding to this organization. And there are just a couple weaknesses we have. And I think this year, the left-handed pitching has given us a lot of problems. So if we look at our contact versus righties and just look to see, like, who clears 70, although the 60s are pretty good. So we have a total of seven players here that have... At least 70 contact against righties. And Rankin isn't even a player that's at the big league level. If we go to contact, now we're down to five. And two of those guys are not at the bigs. Kyle Farmer and Miguel Cabrera. So we certainly, if we add anything in this offseason, I think it's a righty that can hit lefties or a switch hitter. And I'm also trying to think ahead to what next year's rotation looks like. And right now, I think, you know, Soroka, Keller, Michael are locks. Waldachuk, with the way he's playing right now, is likely in there next season. And then I think we're looking at Cole Phillips and Luis Medina battling that out. 
Is there enough youth there to where you let them decide it over being busy at all in free agency? That's kind of the direction I lean when you also consider just Cam Cope's 75 overall. I do wonder if Cope needs more time before he's a big league pitcher. Like right now, he has good home run and walk per nine, but... The hit per nine, strikeout per nine, both being as low as they are, those might need a little bit more. And obviously he has high stamina, and that alone is going to be impacting the overall, probably by two, three points. So if he had 72 stamina, like the average pitcher seems to have in this game, then you'd feel like he needs more time. The 75 makes it feel like he should be called up, but it's just the overall formula and the way it works in this game. Why don't we get into some in-game action here? We got Garrett Crochet trying to close us out in the bottom of the ninth inning. We got two down and Max Muncy at the plate. Yeah, not much of a warm-up at bat here. I'm facing a guy who was drafted and immediately went to the big league roster. I don't know if it was immediately, but he went to the big league roster in his first year because he throws like 103. I'm not sure if he does here in the show. Two on, two down. It's all on Max. Nearly hit him. Yeah, I think that might be missing some velo here on Crochet, unless the Tommy John sapped some of his velocity. I'm not sure. Base hit right field, and we're not going to wave him home. I didn't think we were going to make it there. Muncie came through, but it's not quite enough. And now, Luis Arise. Of all the lefty-lefty matchups we could have, this is the ideal one. Inside, ball one. Arise hitting 295 this year. Missing low, 2-0. Oh. Okay. Does the Coliseum have one more walk-off in it? In there at the knees. I'm not going after that right now. Starting us off with a fastball changeup combo. Missed inside, and there's nowhere to put him. I got to think he goes fastball here. 3 1. Down the line and foul. Almost won it. But now the runners will leave early, so if he can find a base hit, that runner at second is probably scoring. Three and two. Line drive! It is down! And a rise will win it! It could be our final walk-off in the Coliseum! And we get the job done! Man, that was not the smartest, like, First at-bat of the day to be taken there. Facing Garrett Crochet, bottom of the ninth, two down. Back-to-back -back hits for the A's. Really good at-bat, I think, with Luis Arise. And we pick up the dub. Seeing all four of those young players have multi-hit games is amazing. That's how you want to win here late in the season in our position. There are only two more games happening here in the Coliseum. Joe Michael will make another appearance. And it's a loss. We did not score. And this, everybody, is the last game inside Oakland Coliseum. Taking on the Chicago White Sox. This is it. We're moving on to a new home next year. And I'm hoping that I can, you know, just build upon what I have to put together a fun stadium to look at, a fun stadium to play in. And we're controlling Vladimir Guerrero. I want to see if we can get one more home run inside this building. Guerrero's at 36 here in his first season with Oakland. And it looks like, you know, maybe his decision to come here will pay off. Well, certainly it is. We gave him a nice front-loaded contract that he can easily opt out of at the end. But I think the chances of us putting a winning team around Vladdy are looking good with the progress we made this year. Like, on paper, if you were to say, what does a successful year in Season 4 look like? I think we surpassed that. And maybe I should start to do that at the beginning of every year, just as that measuring stick. Guerrero! Left field and hit a ton! And it's gone! Number 37! 
Holy Toledo, this could be it in the Coliseum for the long ball. I have had three at-bats today. I have almost hit for the cycle. Bottom of the fifth inning. It's a tie game. Vladdy's supplying our only runs to this point. Almost yanked it down the line. And now hits it weakly up the line, and this is the one that stays fair, unfortunately. Got Waldachuk here pitching into the sixth inning. So far, been a pretty good outing for him. And we'll take this one to the bag. Uh-oh, they got some offense somewhere, and now it's a 4-2 game. Alex Reyes. On the ground, we need two. Got one there, and the double play. 4-3 game, we got one back. Tying run in scoring position. Missing inside is Jimmy Lambert. We're taking the player lock off now. We're trying to win the finale in the Coliseum. And there's a drive in the air to left field. And it is run down on the warning track. Not quite what we saw in that first at-bat. Let's move ahead. Bottom of the eighth, Tyler Soderstrom. 33,000 here in attendance. I'm not sure if that would be like a normal attendance in this game. Like, I see some empty seats for sure. I don't know if they really know it's the... The home finale for the year, because I think everybody can sell out a lot of those when it's the last chance, but no way of telling them, yeah, this is, we're bulldozing this place in a couple episodes. Miguel Vargas now after the Soderstrom ground out. Vargas not having a great time here at the big league level with the, with the A's. We're hoping next year we see him take off a bit. We need a good right-handed bat to make a difference. Ah, that was that was way late, man. Come on. Swung on and missed. It's up to DC here in the eighth inning. Two down. Clark, a pretty good on-base player for us throughout the season, but the average has declined to 224. And he lines one to first. That finishes off the eighth. In the ninth inning, two on, one down. Jonathan Hernandez is in the game, and it's Aloy Jimenez. Strike one. Bounced it to Geloff. On to second. Double play. Let's see if we can get at least one here, bottom of the ninth. Again, we face Garrett Crochet. He's only blown four saves. We're responsible for one of those. Here's a guy that needs to start hitting lefties better, Josh Baez. But a disappointing year for him. He leads off the ninth. Swung on and missed. Crochet able to get ahead. Inside, it's ball three. Sweeney on deck. That might prompt us to make a move. But Baez now the 3-2. Lined it foul. Buy him at 98. Strike three. We'll bring in Daryl Ernais. Hitting 248 on the season. Not a guy you count on for a solo homer to tie things up. But can he get on base? Lined it right at second base. Kind of just died there at the end. And it's a ground out, leaving us with Max Muncy with two down. Fouled off, and it's strike one. Putting an end to our era in the Coliseum. Two strikes. And that'll wrap it up. This time, Crochet gets the job done. That's the second time he got me with the inside fastball just because of the way he was sequencing things. Those were both after a pitch away. And then he just caught me off guard at the inside fastball. But that's going to be it here in the Coliseum. We're looking forward to our new home next year. 
By the way, I'm still looking for name ideas. Okay, it's the double-A team that made the playoffs, not the triple-A team. I sent Santiago back down to go pitch in those playoff games, but we'll finish out the Major League season with our last road trip. And after flirting with a 500 record for much of the year, we are now 15 games under. September's been dreadful. Double A team just got swept, barely scoring in this three game series. They had four runs. Not going to do much for you. Looks like we got just three games left. We do win here against the Dodgers in the following game. Evan Phillips closes us out. And now we're down to the finale. Since the All Star break, our A's are 24 and 46. That is nearly two losses for every victory. That's how bad it's been, especially here in September where we only have a handful of victories. But this is where our season is going to end against the class of the National League this year, the 108 win Dodgers. We're facing the young Bobby Miller with a 415 ERA. He struck out 94 in 99 innings this season and has 11 victories. Luis Arise finishing off his year. He has 14 home runs, 65 RBIs. Our big additions throughout the series have given us exactly what we wanted. Arise has hit for his high average and now his newfound power, where even 15 is really impressive for him. Vladdy's been Vladdy. You got Bellinger who rebuilt his game and we should be facing him here today. Went up six points of overall, got traded to the Dodgers. Teoscar Hernandez helped regain his form in uh, Oakland and was dealt for Trey Sweeney. Soroka was a good signing. We'll see what next offseason brings our way. One and two. I don't know why I swung at that. Pulled it to the right side and Arise is retired. Batting second today, it is Zach Geloff, one of the team's best stories of the whole season. He's definitely our third baseman going into next year. You know, if I think about what are we looking for in the offseason, I still think it's going to be outfielders again. Because that's where we've picked up guys, traded them. It's where we've had some guys not develop as quickly as we would like or need more time. Nasty from Bobby Miller. You know, if Baez were playing at a higher level, it's a different story. Obviously, Aaron Don comes back from the ACL, and we'll welcome him back into the outfield for sure. But it's pretty unstable elsewhere. I got to match Bobby's aggressiveness here. He's just going after us. 1-2 to Vladdy. Man, that was almost as good as the one that struck out Geloff. Hammered to center field. He's got one more in him. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., number 39, which means we can spend the rest of this game waiting to see if 40 shows up. Soderstrom seems to be raising his average a little bit here down the stretch. We're at 240, which if he were supplying a bit more power, that'd be acceptable, but only 13 homers this season. We'll go through all the numbers here at the end and look at some year-by-year -year comparisons on guys. Joe Adele went yard. I saw that down below. That's why I was late. I was just looking at Joe Adele's stat line. Rolled over to first base, and that completes the top half of the first. Yeah, it would be uh, nice, I think, to have another reclamation project like a Joe Adele on the team. But honestly, given the state of our roster, we kind of need somebody who's more likely to be a big contributor than someone who can uh, be rebuilt or anything like that. Also... You know, the trade logic in this game is odd. The Dodgers have over 100 wins, and they traded away Freddie Freeman. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Austin Slater, who can definitely hit lefties well. He's at the top of this lineup for a reason. I mixed up our pitching rotation to give Michael the last start of the season as Baez flies into the gap and secures it. So I skipped Soroka's last start. No need to give him one more. 
He was great this year. We'll leave it at that. But I gave Michael a couple days extra rest. Gearing up for this last start. Strike two at Chris Taylor. It hits 99 that time. Michael's 1-2. Nice sweeper. And Michael's 3-2 is a fastball lifted for Vargas in left. For out number two. Mookie Betts. You know, if I had to name my favorite, like, non-twin to watch in all of baseball, it's probably Mookie Betts. Who doesn't love good, well-rounded players that are exciting in all facets of the game and can play multiple positions? I like Mookie Betts in the outfield the most, though. There's a change-up away that he looks at for strike two. And now it's time to challenge. Fouled off. Two and two. Change-up. Does he go? He doesn't. Another 3-2 pitch. That time it hit 100, he fouled it off the hands. The organ's going crazy. Down the line and foul. Don't you want to be rested up for the postseason? Why are you having a 10-pitch at-bat right now, Mookie? On the ground, and Muncie can't get there. What a mad bat Reese Hoskins. Hitting 265. Line drive, center field. Betts will turn but stop at second base. We chose not to trade for Andy Pajes, and he happens to be now at the big league level. Hasn't been for long. Pajes certainly fits what we're looking for, and maybe, you know, depending on off-season opportunities, we could still explore a trade for him. I'm sure we could put together a good package as Muncie can't make the play. Baez will fire it home, but he's too late, and it's one apiece. Oh, Bellinger's not in the lineup today. Yeah, he doesn't, uh, he wasn't really playing against lefties much against, or for us, and he's not in their lefty lineup. Hopefully not on the injured list. I want to see him hopefully have some playoff success here. That'd be nice. Trying to wrap it up. That should do it. But, you know, when Michael gives up hits, they come in bunches for some reason. Here's Connor Capel hitting 262. The guy that, you know, when I'm talking about our outfielders, I always seem to exclude him. But he's got a legit chance to be a starter again next season, which would be an interesting path for him to return to that role. But it really depends on if I find the right guy to sign in the offseason. I was thinking about this earlier in regards to Joe Michael. But obviously, like, he's the kind of talent that you'd want to sign to one of those, like, 10-year contracts and secure his entire athletic prime beyond free agency, beyond the first six years. The issue you run into, the negative, is you start paying him a premium immediately to not pay as much of a premium down the road. So if we sign Joe Michael, yikes. Say we sign him for 10 years, $180 million. That's $18 million a year. Now you can backload that and maneuver it a little bit, but basically that turns his salary next year into what could have been a free agent move. So ultimately, if I want to make free agent moves, maybe it's best to not offer that contract and maybe it's not that constraining, but I was just thinking about this before recording today. Like, if we give Michael that contract, it's kind of the short-term equivalent of signing a free agent. And maybe we don't need to be aggressive in free agency. And if we're not, absolutely sign him to a long-term deal. Muncie pops it up. So I'm just... Trying to think about, you know, this probably does set up for us to give Michael the big deal after uh, this season. I think we've seen enough to be confident any longer, and the price might be going up even further. But I was just thinking about that in regards to, like, our certain setup with Vladimir Guerrero and Soroka's deal. Like, if we give that contract to Michael, 
we likely will be limited with how much we can do with free agents the next two years while we have Vladimir Guerrero. And we also gave $8 million a year to Soderstrom. And this is a team with a, a more limited budget. A walk drawn by Josh Baez. Trey Sweeney hitting 234. He's got 13 home runs. It's like him and Soderstrom are each having the same season right now. Blasted to the gap. And it will not be caught or cut off. And around third, a run will score. And Sweeney is into third base with an RBI triple as the A's retake the lead. That's Trey with the Trey. And now Miguel Vargas facing his old team. Vargas rips it down the line. A run will score, and it's 3-1. to one. We'll stay put. Ultimately, if we had to start making some room salary-wise, the easiest thing to do this offseason would be to move Mitch Keller. I think we could trade him. But uh, beyond him, the rest of the guys making a lot of money, we kind of need them. 3-1 now to Luis Arise. Why'd I chase ball four like that? Base hit center field. Now with the runner moving, Vargas can make it to third base. That's better than a walk. Michael ran into some trouble giving up consecutive hits, and now Bobby Miller doing the same thing. Runners at the corners. Couple strikes into Geloff, and he's behind 0-2. Making Bobby throw a lot of pitches here in this inning. This is 46. Nope, not chasing, and the count's full. Arise will leave with the pitch. And it was ball four. But at last, Miller finishes off the inning. We'll see how Michael rebounds. Facing James Outman. 28 pitches in the first. A couple of long innings here for each pitcher. Just high. Good take by Outman. This is another long at bat. Three and two. And he went around. Strike three. Trying to get some quick at-bats here, and they just keep, like, fouling pitches off. I need some quick ABs, please. And Trevino drives one to the gap. That'll be extras on an 0-2 changeup. Michael not quite as sharp as the last time we saw him in his complete game shutout. I got Garrett Hampson. I failed to develop him in my Rockies franchise, but I think Hampson's actually done pretty good in this series. That or I'm thinking of Brendan Rodgers. I couldn't develop either one. On the ground, we can get the speedy Hampson. And Slater hammers one to center. And it is gone. This game is tied. That was a fastball down, but he just gets a hold of it. Slater, a very good hitter with uh, a lefty on the mound. We'll take that. That was a good pitch. Popped up towards the dugout. Come on, man. How can we not make that play? Two and two. Oh, another full count. And this is not going to be... Anything like the last time we saw Joe Michael. Rolled over at last. This is going to be a long game. <laughs> well, the road to 40 only has one step left. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Can he give us one more before the season is over? Three and one to Vladdy. And it's ball four. These pitchers are begging for a 1-2-3 inning. Not happening here, and Soderstrom hits a towering fly to center. That's an easy play. 
Bounced it to the right. Not quite through. Oh, he threw it away! Everybody trying to move up. And they will successfully. Trouble brewing again for Bobby Miller and the Dodgers as Muncy. Oh, that was late. Got to be prepared for a tag. I don't know why I just sent him home on that. That was not smart at all. I was hoping he'd have to make like a diving or sliding catch and it'd be a little easier, but just took off anyway. That's uh, one way to kill a rally. Line! Oh, Guerrero got it! Base hit, it's through. Another 3-2 here from Joe Michael facing Andy Pajes. And he almost hit him. Two on here in the third. Michael not quite as sharp in this outing as we've seen in some recent. Down in front of Vargas. Runner is waved home. And Vargas cannot get him. It's 4-3. Off the glove or the leg... That's one way to do it. That's a 1-5-3 put out. The secondary pitches just haven't been there today and the fastball's been all over the place. Trying to pitch more up in the zone and he's having troubles locating. That wasn't even a strike. Capel comes up firing and it's 6-3. That should end the inning. But it's a rough outing for Joe Michael, and this probably ends his day. But the way we've handled our offense, maybe we can still get back in it. Josh Baez, base hit center field. And there's one to the gap in right center. Mookie on the move. He will not get there. We're going to wave home Baez. Sweeney on to third base. He does it again. Trey Sweeney with his second triple of the game. The A's are not going down easily in the season finale. Vargas, last time up, ripped a single down the left field line. That scored Sweeney. Three and one. Yeah, Miller and Michael are each just not on their game today. That wasn't even close. The lineup turns over again for Oakland. High to a rise at 99. Ripped into right field. Betts going back. He can't get it. It's a ground rule double. Six to five with the run scoring. I can't imagine Bobby Miller stays in much longer, right? Two in scoring position. Geloff with nobody out. Geloff has two strikeouts. He hasn't joined the fun yet in this game. And it's another 3-1 count with Guerrero on deck. Miller has thrown 70 pitches and has nine outs recorded. 3-1. Fouled off. To the right side, and we do not send the runner home. It was hit too sharply. Well, that brings up Guerrero. And there he goes. The hope for a double play ball from Tyler Soderstrom. Got to watch out for the low stuff here. Like that. Line drive, it is off the glove of Betts. Everybody's scrambling and the game is tied. And there's still only one out. And now the move is made. Here comes Cole Irvin. At the end of the day, each starting pitcher, I believe will be charged with six earned. Michael will last three innings and Bobby Miller will last three and a third. They bring in Irvin to face Connor Capel. Trying to end this inning for good. 
I gotta be willing to look at those strikes, I think, in these situations. I got something better. You know, that's a good swing. Max Muncy, base is juiced. Muncy with 20 hits, hitting 274 on the season. Making the most of this opportunity. Deep to the gap and down for extras. Empty the bases. Muncy to second, and it's 9-6 to six Oakland. What is this game right now? We began this inning trailing 6-3. It is now 9-6. It all began, by the way, with a base hit from Josh Baez. So we've officially hit a round. Base hit? No, he got it. The inning is over. Here's Gunnar Hoagland. Here's somebody else that could be like in the mix for the big league rotation next year. He's been mainly pitching out of the bullpen and doing so really well. B potential, like a 78 or so. And this will be a nice look at him here as we'll just see how far he can uh, take this one. As far as he can go, basically. That's headed to the cap. I don't think we're done with the offense in this game. Lead off double for Chris Taylor. You know, the other night, there were 11 teams, I believe, that scored 10 or more runs. The most since, I don't know what my notification said, like 1894. It's fitting we can have one of those type of games here, it looks like. We're only one off of scoring 10. Tapped it right back to Hoagland. It's a four-pitch walk to Pajes. Couldn't get anything called there. We'll face Michael Bush. Lifted for Vargas. And we're going to put up a zero. We are four innings in. There's been 15 runs and 19 hits already combined. Maybe the offenses will settle down. Outman over Hoagland and Arise gets him. He went around on that. One strike away. Oh, give us that one. Man, you got it. I thought the MLB cared about pace of play. 2-2. Two -two. Did he go? Yes, he did. And we finally have a scoreless inning in this game. It's never fun to be the guy that can't join the fun, though, in a game like this. Nine runs. Hits all over the place, but none yet from Zach Geloff. Blasted to right center field. Betts goes back and settles under. I played a game once. I'm not even talking about video games right now. Back when I actually played baseball in high school. We had a game where the offense was on fire. And I was not a part of it. I remember being the first out of the inning with a strikeout. We then, you know... We're hitting so well. Guerrero left field. This is hit back and caught. I was the first out of the inning with a strikeout and the second out of the inning with a strikeout. That doesn't feel great. My swing was screwed up, though. Starting to settle things down. This is more like it. Where's the older Max Muncy? I think he's with the Yankees in this series. So there will be no Max Muncy grounding out to Max Muncy, which is really disappointing. But also, we played the Yankees not long ago. It might have happened. See you later, Chris Taylor. That's strike two on Mookie. I like how Gunnar Hoagland has pitched. Ooh, that would have been a nice final pitch of the inning. That'll do. Strike three. Capel hits one to left field, and he is retired. 
Muncy off the glove at third base. It slowed it down. Trey Sweeney has two triples. I think Trey needs one more. Sweeney, right center field. You gotta be kidding me. I'm hitting three right now. We're gonna wave the runner around. Hyper aggressive. Sweeney is out at third base. The run did score, but we could not get him his third triple. Landon Sims is going to enter. One of our younger players in the bullpen this year. It's now a four run game. Just missed that one. Okay. It is now a three and two count on Hoskins. In the air, Capel ain't getting to it. And that's going to be a ground rule double. A quick strikeout of Pajes gets the first out for Sims. Dodgers looking for their first run since the third inning. And it's to the gap. Baez will get there. And Hoskins is not about to flash the 27 speed. Popped up. And the Dodgers still can't get that seventh run. Hey, Geloff joined the fun. He's got a base hit. Could this be Vladdy's last at-bat of the season? He has 39 homers on the year. Really forcing me to catch up to that inside fastball. It's one of my weaknesses. Base hit left field. Might just be 39. We're going to sub out Tyler Soderstrom. His season is complete, and we're going to put in Shea Langoliers. He's hitting 198. Man, he was on fire for a while. I highlighted him for an episode. That was fun while it lasted. Hey, that's a part of the baseball experience is, you know, you're always going to get excited when a guy plays at a very high level, but it seems those hot streaks can come out of anywhere. The count has run full, 3-2. Headed to right field, and Betts takes care of it. And here is perhaps the best reliever this team has, Alex Reyes. 97 strikeouts in 78 innings this year, and his development's been unbelievable. Make a couple subs here. We'll put uh, Denzel Clark out in right. Logan Davidson's going to take over for Guerrero. And Daryl Arnaiz will replace Luis Arise. As we head into the eighth inning and start with a drive into the left center gap. And Baez is there. Couple quick strikes in there to Garrett Hampson, not wasting any time. Struck him out. Reyes has one year left on his contract to make about four and a half million dollars. And I think he's becoming one of the franchise's premier relievers at an 85 overall. His next contract could uh, be a lot more than he's making right now. And he's already making pretty good money for a reliever. Two and two to Slater. And he ends up losing him. So let's get ahead of Chris Taylor. And the one, two. Struck him out. Can't believe we got a guy playing as well as him and we just got him in the Rule 5 draft. Now, he was probably too good to really, you know, he shouldn't have been available there. But we have developed him incredibly well. I forget what his overall was when we picked him up. By the way, base hit for Denzel Clark to start off the inning for us. But I think he might be up, you know, 7 to 10 points. Muncy left field. He's going to test it. Back goes Outman. And he's got the room. Two triples, a double, and three RBIs for Sweeney, having an incredible series. 
So that means in the previous two games, he had another triple and two doubles. A lot of extra base hits to close out his season. That's what you want to see. The count's three and two. And base hit right field. Sweeney now a homer shy of the cycle. It's a four for five day. So we got one more AB here for the former Dodger, Miguel Vargas. Oh, it hits him. Come on. We got to empty the benches here. Clear them out. I want to see that awkward jog from the bullpen. That's my favorite part of every, like, altercation in baseball is when the bullpen's empty. And, like, you know, there's a couple hundred feet to cross, so they jog. But they're not sprinting like they're actually going to join the fight. It's one of the most awkward things, but also hilarious. Tapped it. And covering his barns, he just gets there. Reyes still in the game. Four-run lead. We are bottom nine. First part of this game was super slow because everybody was getting hits. We had all kinds of runs. And then everything dried up when the starters left. Oh, you got to get there, Davidson. Yes. That could have been an error on Shea, and he just saved it. What a weird game. You have two promising starters come in. Both get rocked. They get replaced by, you know, long relievers that just settle the game down almost entirely. We've scored. There's been one run scored since the starters left. And that was our one run we had a couple innings ago. Right at Baez. I thought this might turn into like a 15 to 13 kind of game. Like the one the Braves and Snakes played the other night. That was a fun one. Diamondbacks looking really good. Right to Geloff. And that will complete season four. The A's end on a high note with an offensive explosion in game 162 as they beat the Dodgers and take a series from a team with 108 victories. Trey Sweeney, four hits on the day, two triples. What a day. That was fun. That was awesome. Everybody in our starting lineup ended up getting a hit today, which you love to see. A lot of extra base hits, a lot of guys getting RBIs. Michael gave up six, and Miller gave up nine. <laughs> nine earned runs. What's also fun about a game like that is it's not like we got all of our runs off homers. I find, you know, like a double sometimes to be more exciting. Not better, but if you think about it, just hear me out. All right, hear me out with an open mind. Home runs are rally killers because as soon as you hit the home run, the bases are empty. You drive in a guy with a triple, you fire up the crowd, and now you keep the pressure on the pitcher because you're over there at third base in his peripheral vision. And the rally can continue. Just saying. Home run could be a little overrated. But with that, everybody, 74 and 88 is where this season ends for us. It is a pretty solid improvement off of the previous years. 16 more victories. And who knows how many more that could have been if we didn't trade away a couple players like Cody Bellinger or Nick Gordon. Or if uh, Aaron Don had never tore his ACL like a month into the season. I think this was, by all accounts, a very successful year for us. The offseason is going to see us look to bring in a couple new coaches. I, I can't look at the coach menu right now for some reason. Almost our entire staff's contracts will expire at the end of the year. So we're going to have a chance then to focus on some coaches that can help out the defense of our young guys, the durability... And I think that it's uh, the right time for kind of a fresh coaching staff. You know, I think you see this sometimes in sports. Like, sometimes the coach that helps rebuild the team along isn't the right coach to take him to the next level beyond that. I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, so maybe that's not even true. But let's go through our numbers now at the season coming to a close. 39 home runs for Vladimir Guerrero. He leads the team. Luis Arise with 14 ends up being in second. And of course, you know, 
Bellinger would have been there for us. He did end up catching fire again with the Dodgers. Hit eight home runs since the trade. The average is back into the 260s. And he's up to an 82 overall. I am really curious what contract he ends up signing in the offseason. Because I just think that's an awesome story for a guy who showed just... He had one of the best seasons, I think, in recent history when you look at his 2019, especially considering how early that was in his career. That's a ridiculous season. But for him to then regress, fall to a 74 overall, go to his third team, rebuild with us, and then go back to where it all began, and maybe not be the same player, but definitely a quality player to have. How many did Nick Gordon finish with? 16. I'm not sure he added a whole lot more home runs with the uh, Braves. Flatty ends up with 95 RBIs and Arise with 66, hitting in the leadoff spot basically every single day. Tyler Soderstrom ends up with a 241 average. Got some decent development this year, but we'd like more on the offensive side next season. Overall, he took a step back this year. Trey Sweeney definitely finished the season hot. There's no doubt about that. 79 overall, but in the little bit we saw last year, that showed more promise than this season, where his numbers took a dive from that point. Zach Geloff hit 279 at the end of the year, and plus 11 against lefties, man. Here is uh, our number one lefty masher. And I think he had a phenomenal season. I think now you want to see, can he add some power to that? You know, can he take it a step further? Josh Baez closes with a 204 average and had a very mixed season, struggling against left-handed pitching at both the Major League and the AAA level. So we definitely need to see him step it up offensively. Miguel Vargas. We traded for him. We have high hopes. But right now, he's still developing, and he's not uh, playing at a high level at the moment. Negative war since joining us. Connor Capel, could he be a starter next season? It's possible. Now, I know we're going to be talking about you, Sneal Cruz, but probably not on opening day. At some point, though, next year, he might make his debut. Daniel Susak, hit near 300 for much of the year, and I think, you know... 561 at bats in. We know who he is. He's a solid defender. Very solid defender that can give you a decent batting average. Maybe he turns into like a Christian Vasquez type of catcher, and that's a good player to have. But it's amazing how little he slugged this year. 302 for a guy who hit 246. Only 12 extra base or 13 extra base hits all season. Logan Davidson at 200, and I didn't see enough from him to guarantee anything going into next year, and there's a chance we could look to trade him somewhere. Denzel Clark hitting 224. I think that we're going to be challenging his uh, spot. He doesn't have a lot of power, and the average dip this year, and the average non-base numbers are where he's thrived in the past. But now that we've gotten a bit more playing time, we're seeing those numbers go down a bit. Deshaun Knowles is one player that could help challenge him. He has a similar skill set, but with higher potential. Daryl Arnaiz, solid defender, hits 250. That'll keep you on a bench, for sure. Aaron Don, can't wait to see him once again. Should be fully healed here shortly. Pitching, Ken Wolbachuk closes with a really nice hot streak. Up to an 80 overall. Should be in our rotation going forward. Alex Ray has had a 2-2-3 ERA. I mean, seeing plus 8, plus 8, plus 7. That's special. Victor Gonzalez, the other former Dodger, has also been uh, pretty good since joining us. Very good. Michael Soroka, 3.2 ERA. I don't think the second half really went his way after dominating the first half. Having shutouts, it seem, you know, one after another. He ends up with a 2.3 war. We got Domingo Acevedo, three years as our closer now, and he's done a phenomenal job in all three years. Jonathan Hernandez, I think he rebounded after a rough start. 
but it was a one-year deal. He's probably not going to be back next year. Griffin Jacks, we'll see about him. We have some guys that I think can contribute down at AAA, and with Jacks being 31 and a 71 overall with this level of play, I'm going to want to bring up like a George Williams or somebody next year to take over that spot. Luis Medina. He'll likely be back in the rotation again to start off next season, but I want to see him take a step. What we've seen so far is like a solid fourth or fifth guy in the rotation, but I want to know if he can be more than that because he's posted two years that are really similar and year two wasn't as good as year one. Mitch Keller wasn't uh, phenomenal this year. We knew what we were getting into with him. Just a solid starter that could step in and be a uh, three or four in the rotation. Joe Michael. This year was all about getting him experience. And sometimes it was, uh, you know, we saw the growing pains on display. But overall, I'm happy with this year. I just wanted to see him get better. And he did get a lot better this season. Next year, I'm hoping to see uh, an improvement to the, the ERA and to be more consistent. Kyle Muller, 5.16 ERA. I'm pretty much done with this experiment. Overall, our war leaders this season on offense, it's Luis Sarais with a 3.3, Guerrero with a 3.1, and then Zach Geloff fell to 2.8. But the new free agent additions are the top war players, but it's good to see the trio of young guys next up. And for the pitchers, highest war belongs to Joe Michael. He is one of the best strikeout pitchers and the best that's in the starting rotation. And while he does, you know, struggle with control and walks from time to time, I don't think it got extremely out of hand. His FIP also suggests he got a little unlucky this season. Waldachuk also had a higher war than Mike Soroka. So just keep that in mind. But... For our entire rotation to have, you know, everybody above 1.2, 4 of the 5, a 2.4 better, that's tremendous progress for this team. Here are your league leaders in Season 4, with Rafael Devers posting a 310 batting average, just bested by Ronald Acuna's 311. For home runs, Pete Alonso hit 51 for the Astros. And that was the most in all of baseball. Alonzo had 134 RBIs, but Austin Riley had 143. I'm seeing Teoscar Hernandez here. He had a phenomenal year in New York. Must have mashed lefties really well. 37 home runs. We had three players in the National League reach 20 wins. Walker Bueller, Sandy Alcantara, and Shohei Otani. Nobody quite got there in the American League. Saves, it's Pete Fairbanks with 49, Felix Bautista had 47, but Evan Phillips posted 64 saves. There have been a couple years in this series we didn't even win 64 games. Max Freed, best ERA in the American League, and Sandy Alcantara in the National League. Batting war, Mike Trout had a 9, and that is the best in baseball. Ha Sung Kim, a 7.3 is impressive. And for pitching war, Alec Manoa with a 5.4 in the American League. And obviously, we saw the second half didn't go well for Soroka, and he ends up, you know, way down the board, outside of the top 35. He's 40th. Shohei Otani, though, a 5.5 in the National League. That is the best. Otani this year, at 31, had 20 wins, a 2.6 ERA, had 203 strikeouts while hitting 39 home runs and slugging 543. You want awards? Here you go. Pete Alonso is the American League MVP, and Austin Riley takes it home in the National League. How does Otani not crack the top three? Zach Gallen is the American League Cy Young winner. Shohei Otani takes home some hardware in the National League. For batting title, we talked about that. It was Ronald Acuna Jr. And reliever of the year, Felix Bautista. This favors closers, so we're not going to see Alex Reyes up here. 
Rookie of the year is Pedro Duarte. And I saw a comment on the last video, a long one, talking about how Duarte is doing something that really no one's done before at his age and deserves a massive boost to his potential. I'm not opposed to that. Just giving a massive boost to him and seeing what happens with the Tigers. He's the rookie of the year. In the National League, it's Vinny Gomez, and he got called up partway through his first year. He's 18 years old, and he was unbelievable. And we got a player coming in next year in Eusneel Cruz, who's a pretty similar player. So if you want to look at these numbers and say maybe this is a reasonable expectation for Eusneel Cruz, we could certainly use this type of impact. Looking to see if we have any awards for this year, and no gold gloves. We saw Teoscar take home a silver slugger. So I think that's been a solid trade, him for Trey Sweeney for both sides. But not a lot of hardware here coming to Oakland. Fun year, everybody. This was a year we were building towards in the franchise, and I think it was successful. I am very much looking forward to year five to see what Joe Michael and Aaron Don look like. What the number one pick, Eusneel Cruz, looks like. And who else can come contribute? And you've got guys like Soderstrom and Geloff, Sweeney, that could take massive leaps that change the trajectory of this entire organization. I can't wait to see what the future holds. And year five is around the corner. We're going to be on to the offseason here shortly. We're going to have the stadium getting finalized and spring training to see what next year's team could look like. So that's going to do it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And more A's franchise is on the way. Have a great day.